I feel that St. Martin acts very much as a focal point. There are many converging energies that, that create the possibility for something extraordinary. First of all, the Caribbean, by its, by its climatological character, is, has very strong light and beautiful light and very intense and varied colors. And that is already the basis of a subject matter that calls to you because of its intensity, its variety, its profusion. And <clears throat> the other thing is that our climate allows the uh, encourages, in my case, the going out into the landscape itself. You know, you might get a, a, a hot days, of course, and you might get rainy days, but basically being outdoors is just a normal part of life, as opposed to only a seasonal thing. The painting here we're looking at is 10 feet long and 6 feet tall, and is painted on location in the tradition, uh, historically, of what's called plein air painting. And there are many values to plein air painting. One, you are drawn by something that is beautiful and majestic, and by staying there and painting it, you're exposed to it. Two, by, by its natural uh, changing quality, you're reminded that life is a continuous flowing process. So a cloud comes, then it's gone, and it casts a shadow, and then that's gone. And so the landscape is constantly breathing and moving back and forth. And as I'm interested in color, principally, then I get the opportunity to see how yellow works as opposed to red, and how, how you know, the blues find themselves even down into the, into the oleander and up into the sky, back and forth. So it's, it's, a, it's an experience which <clears throat> leaves a residue, and the residue is the painting. When I see a color that attracts me, I quickly put it down and I see something else, and I do that. And what I'm doing is that I'm every time the landscape shows me something that cuts my catches my attention, I respond to it, no matter what it is I'm doing before. And I keep moving back and forth between all of these things, and in the end, there's an accumulation of brush strokes all over that come into a harmony, because I didn't have an intended destination. I have just only responded to a living thing and the end result is something that has a living quality to it because none of it is prefabricated or preconceived. It's all just responded to and it records a real place so that for history to come this, no matter what might occur to the actual physical place, there will be a record of it at a moment of its pure, natural, glorious beauty. Everything I do is done on location, from life. Whatever the subject is, I'm, I'm wherever the viewer is looking at the subject. So, mom was a neighbor at another part of the island when I lived there, who was going to celebrate her 100th birthday. And so I came and we were friends. And I went over to paint her portrait, sorry, in celebration of this upcoming event. And I painted her just as I found her. We didn't change clothes and get all in. And she, what she was doing, without glasses, I wish to point out, she was there sewing. You know? And so you find this thing that you didn't plan, but you get a response, uh, there's a response in you towards it, so you want to just act. And that's the way I like to paint, because then you don't have the time to think, because you, you're so, uh, like, if I had to think out painting the basket this way, it wouldn't be as alive, you see? But only because that little bit of blue caught my eye and I touched it and a little this, that finally these things come out. And so there's her cooking pot, her cold pot as she calls it, and one of the things I love, and this is all truly in terms of love, uh, uh, because I consider that when something appears in the picture that is fantastic, it's like a gift to me. It's not something that I have done myself. So when later on I looked at her socks and how they had, her stockings rather, and how they had sort of just dropped down naturally, but I didn't spend any time trying to focus on them. But it was only after I realized that with just a couple of strokes, somehow, the essence of that whole piece of garment 
was rendered, but it wasn't a conscious thing that I thought about even when I painted it. And over here with Fred, it's, it, there's something very similar. As I say, the, the painting being a residue of an experience, you don't know what you're going to do, so you always wait till the end to see what's there. And sometimes you don't see it in the beginning, and sometimes later you see it. Sometimes you see it immediately. But with Fred, I consider this at this point like it was unfinished and that we were going to come back and work on it again because that was my mental frame at the time, but it never happened. And so the painting was put away and then later on brought out and I started looking at it and I thought, what on earth could I do, even in one brush stroke, that would improve this, you see, that wouldn't spoil it. And among the things that again act like a discovery, as did her socks, you know, or his shoes, is his hat that's sitting over here. It's so subtle that it's almost invisible and yet it's present, you know, and that it became present wasn't again of my doing, it was of my discovering that it come present later. Right. When you're painting outdoors, en plein air as it's called, uh, people often simply assume that you're painting a picture of the scene, but the scene itself is made up of energy, of forces, of movements, of patterns, of colors, a whole bunch of things that aren't limited to just being a rock, you see? And so here in a painting like this, you can see how the sea has definitely an action and then it molds the beach. But if you watch it, it moves right into the cliffs and that same kind of energy, movement, pattern, rhythm continues. And as you move on down, and in this particular case, and you discover there are a bunch of people here as well. But it's all really integrated, and it's all made up of color and rhythms, and it, you could take anything and follow it throughout the whole picture. So after a while, the whole painting becomes alive, and as the light changes here, this is a shadow cast down, but in an hour or two, poof, that shadow will disappear, and then the painting will take on a totally different aspect. So again, spontaneity and working rapidly is part of what's necessary in plein air painting.